want to play. I'm a, I think I'm a basketball player before I'm a point guard or a shooting guard. I'm a basketball player. So, uh, you know, I want to uh, do whatever I got to do to be on the floor, and I'm prepared for that. All right. But if you had to choose, which would you select? Uh, like I said, I don't think it really matters. Uh, you know, I think I'm comfortable doing either. Uh, I think in my two years in college, you saw me play two roles. As a freshman, I was off-ball guy, knock down shots and defend. As a sophomore year, I kind of, you know, moved to more of a point guard spot. And I was asked to do a lot more, you know, facilitating and scoring and things like that. So, uh, you know, I felt comfortable in both roles. And uh, like I said, I'm prepared for either. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Christoph uh, Faltas, when you're, when you're ready. Hello there. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. I watching you. I watched you in, uh, in Crete last summer about the World Cup. How different uh, is your game right now? How evolve, evolve your game after the summer of 2019? Yeah, I would probably say the summer of 2019 was a lot of experimenting for me. Uh, it was a, I moved to a different position. Uh, I was doing different things that I hadn't done, you know, my freshman year uh, of college. So I was experimenting with, you know, the, the stuff that I was working on. Um, you know, to get to, to get to, uh, you know, to be able to make the team in the first place. So, uh, you know, that was really fun. And, and my teammates and stuff, um, you know, it was, it was nice to play with, you know, all the top guys in the country. So um, I think my game has evolved a lot from there because now not only have I experimented with those things, but I've worked on those things. I've seen where I fit in perfectly uh, into different spots. So uh, I think Crete helped my game grow tremendously. And also, uh, About the, the last months, how difficult for you was without the official game? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's kind of been a little tough for me just, just because uh, I've been out of uh, I've been out of basketball since February. Uh, so you know, for me to kind of you know, it, it ain't nothing new because, like I said, I've been out since February, so I'm kind of just you know, been working and trying to get back healthy. And when I, it got to about May or June, that's when I became fully healthy. I was able to do all my lifts, all my workouts and stuff. So now it's just keep, keep moving and moving. And, you know, I knew that we were just going to get, keep getting pushed back and pushed back. But, you know, for me to complain about, uh, you know, the draft right now with everything that's going on in our, in, you know, our country, uh, that would, that would be asking out of me. So, uh, you know, I'm okay with it. I, I know we'll, uh, we'll get there, you know, sometimes. And one last question for me. Uh, how you imagine the next season and what do you expect about next season? Um, honestly, I, I'm not really expecting anything. Uh, I'm expected to, you know, you be given a role and excel at that role, no matter what it is and no matter where it is. Uh, you know, I'm ready. So, you know, I've been working on a lot of different things and, and preparing to do whatever I'm asked. So, uh, you know, whatever that is, I'm fully prepared for it. Thank you very much. You guys, if you can make sure to mute your microphone if there's noise coming in the background. And also, if we could try to limit it to one question uh, per person, that would be great. Uh, next question is going to be from James Ham when he's ready. Hey, Tyrese, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Hey, I, I hate to ask a two-part question because you just said that, but uh, I cover both the Kings and the Warriors. Have you spoken to either the Sacramento Kings or the Golden State Warriors? And Uh, just where do you think you're going to go in this year's draft? Uh, I've spoken to Golden State, um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't have any clue where I'm going to go in this draft. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot of different spots where I fit in well. Um, but like I said, I'm really prepared to, you know, kind of be thrown into wherever or drafted into any situation. Uh, I think I've you know, put in a lot of work this offseason, so. Uh, just being ready for, you know, whatever's thrown at me. Uh, Brian Windhorst, when you're ready. Uh, Tyrese, I know that you've known Tyler Hero since you guys were kids. And if I could only ask one question, allow me to ask, knowing him as you do, where does the confidence that he is displaying and succeeding with, where do you think that comes from, having seen him grow up? Oh, and his work, for sure. Uh, you know, Tyler's worked hard since we were little kids. Uh, we kind of worked, we kind of broke up in, uh, about our freshman year of high school. Uh, so I wasn't, uh, we weren't that close anymore to kind of see, 
you know, him work even harder in high school to obviously get to where he is today. Um, but but I know all the work he put in. Uh, we're a lot closer now uh, than we were in high school. We talk all the time. So, um, you know, I'm glad to see him doing well. Uh, you know, I love that for him and, and his family. And, uh, you know, this is what we've, what we've dreamt of since we were kids. And um, it, it doesn't really come as a surprise to me. Uh, Jeff Garcia, when you're ready. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate that. Miss you at the 2K League Arena. <laughs> hey, uh, Tyrese, good to see you with you. I covered the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, have you any communications with them? And if so, um, what was that conversation like? Uh, what was your takeaway? What would it be like to be drafted by San Antonio? Uh, I have I have not spoken to uh, okay. San Antonio yet. Um, when you look at the draft, you know, the many look at it and say, hey, you know, it's not a strong draft. Does that motivate you? Does that kind of light a fire under you? To prove them I wrong. Think, I yeah. think it's so I think it's like such a lazy uh casual comment. Like uh I think that I don't understand why people act like every draft class has like five all stars, five Hall of Famers. Like I, I really I have a hard time uh kind of understanding that. I think we have a lot of dudes in this draft that are gonna do very well in the NBA and uh we I mean it's hard for us to say that right now, but I, I hope we can revisit this in a couple of years and have that discussion. Uh, about what people think uh, about our class, but uh, I think it's a lot stronger than uh, people think. Appreciate you, Tyrese. Yep. Warren Shaw, when you're ready. Hey, Tyrese. Tyrese, thanks for doing this, brother. Um, what do you think is your best non-basketball trait? Like, what's the intangible that you're going to bring to an NBA locker room next season? <laughs> um, I think just being me as a person. I think I'm very personable. Um, you know, I create relationships with all my teammates. I think if you ask any of my teammates from college or even high school to that matter, um, I think they would tell you that we probably still have a relationship to this day and, uh, they could talk to me about anything and I could talk to them about anything. I think, uh, transparency is a big deal, uh, for me and not only having a relationship with my teammates, but, you know, with the coaching staff at Iowa State and Oshkosh North as well. So, uh, just being me. And uh, I think, you know, the better relationships are with people, uh, the better it is, you know, towards winning. Thanks so much, man. Yep. Next question is coming from Mark Berman, when you're ready. Uh, yeah, Tyler. Um, yeah, how many teams have you actually interviewed with? And have the Knicks been one of them? And what do you think about the Knicks and their situation at point guard? They have been looking uh, at that direction. Yeah, uh, I have. I think I've interviewed with three teams. Uh, the Knicks being one of them. Um, you know, I I, I I like the Knicks. Uh, you know, roster and uh, you know, I, I think they uh, are an up and coming team. You know, obviously they have uh, a, a lot of guys that can you know play the point guard spot. Uh, and Alfred and Dennis and Frank. Um, you know, but I'm prepared to do whatever I, I have to do. Uh, you know, no matter where that is. So. Uh, if it was the Knicks for your uh, for your question, uh, I'm prepared to do whatever is asked of me. Uh, that's play the one or slide to the two or come off the bench or start. Uh, doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm ready. Was it a recent uh, interview or uh, and what do you feel about uh, that market playing in a, in a big market like New York? Um, it was probably a couple months ago. Uh, it was definitely before the lottery. Uh, you know. During during probably probably like July or something I don't I don't, I don't really remember, um, but in terms of your question about the market uh, that doesn't really worry me or concern me in any way. Um, I'm a basketball player, so uh, I'll play basketball wherever that is. And I know you probably get that answer from everybody, uh, and they don't know what to expect when they get there. But uh, you know I, I'm prepared uh, to play basketball anywhere, so um, I'm looking forward to the challenge wherever that is. Thank you. Ian Bagley, when you're ready. Harry, thanks for doing this. Um, I'm sorry if you had mentioned this already, but have you spoken to uh, the Nets? And if so, how do you see yourself fitting in on that roster? No, I, I haven't spoke to uh, Brooklyn. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Adam Zagoria, when you're ready. Hey, Tyrese, thanks for doing this, man. Um, just with the Knicks, uh, you know, you talked about them before. What would it be like, you know, potentially playing with RJ and Mitchell Robinson and some of the guys on that team? And 
do you think he'll still be there at number eight? Um, you know, to answer that, I think, uh, you know, I think they got a great young core. Uh, you know, I think that it's an, definitely an up and coming team in the NBA. Um, you know, I, I see myself fitting there, um, you know, whatever spot that is. Um, and, uh, the second part of your question was, do you think, do I think I'll still be there at eight? Uh, I have no clue. I wish I had that answer for you. Um, but, uh, uh if I am and the Knicks, uh, uh, take me, then uh, I'm ready to get to work. Good luck, man. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, next question is coming from TAB Deportes. When you're ready. Hi, from Puerto Rico. Which NBA player is your inspiration? Inspiration. Well, that's a good question. Um, I'd probably say, well, I, I watched a lot of old, uh, like throwback, throwback uh, basketball, like 80s and 90s stuff. Uh, growing up, because my dad's a, my dad's an old head, so he had me watching a lot of older stuff. But uh, for me, Magic Johnson has always been my my guy. Uh, just because his, his passion and his spirit on the court, uh, but his vision and uh, his impact on winning. I don't think people really understand how much of a winner Magic Johnson really is. So uh, that would, that'll probably be my inspiration. Thank you and good luck. Yeah, thank you. Next up, Jace Frederick. When you're ready. Hey, Tyrese. Uh, first off, have you had any communication with the Timberwolves? And then part two, um, is there any part of your game that you don't think maybe wasn't put on full display at the college level that will shine through um, in the NBA game? Um, I haven't spoken to the Timberwolves yet. Um, you know, I'm sure I will here soon. Uh, and then the second part of your question, um, you know, I think there's just a lot of things that I've worked on since then that – I, I didn't really use in college or I don't know if I really could or do it at a high level in college. So I didn't do it. Um, but, uh, I, coach prom gave me the green light. So anything that I really wanted to do, I was able to do it at Iowa state. So, um, you know, I wouldn't say I was held back in, in any, in any shape, form or fashion. Um, but you know, I've worked on a lot since then. So, uh, you know, if I had a rewind button and I could go do it again, I'm sure you would see a lot of, a lot of different stuff, but, uh, Fortunately, I don't have that. Chase Hughes, you're next. Hey, Tyrese. Um, have you had any contact with the Washington Wizards? And also, how would you, uh, how do you think your three-point shot will translate to the next level in terms of range and also mechanics? Uh, I have not spoke to Washington. And uh, the second part of your question about my three-point shot, I think it's so overblown, the stuff about my mechanics and uh, – and range because uh that's why if they were to, to uh pick you um yeah i have talked to detroit um and i think i fit there really well as well um you know i think you know being able to learn from dudes like derrick rose and uh, blake griffin would be huge two guys that have done this at a high level um especially at a young age so they know what it takes to do that and then you know a team with a you know with a good young core as well and um uh, you know, I would be fully ready to go. I think I'm a Midwest guy through and through. So uh, being in Detroit would be no problem for me. And, uh, you know, I, I think I fit fit well there. Alder Almo, when you're ready. Hi, Therese. Thanks for doing this. Uh, they've already asked the next question. So my question would be, how do you see yourself as a point guard or a shooting guard? Uh, a basketball player. Uh, whatever you need from me, I'll do. So if you want me to play the PG, I can do that. I think I facilitate better than anybody in this draft. Um, you know, I think I can, you know, run a team right away. Uh, but if you want to play the two and knock down shots and defend, I think I can do that as well. Uh, so whatever's really asked of me, I'll do. And I think basketball is kind of transitioning more and more into, you know, small ball or, or, or positionless basketball. So I think I can really fit anywhere. Um, and I think, if I move to the two and I'm close to the rebound, I'm going to grab it and take it anyway. So it doesn't really matter for me either spot. Thank you, Therese. Yeah, thank you. Next up is Dwayne Rankin. Thank you. Appreciate that, Bill. Uh, two, two things. One, you said that, if, if I heard you right, you said that three teams have talked to you. You mentioned Knicks, Pistons. Uh, who was the third team? Uh, is that team Phoenix? Is it a different team? And what do you feel like you can bring to an NBA team right away? Uh, the third team is Golden State, and the second part of your question, what, I, what can I bring? I think right away, um, 
I think I'm, I'm coming in as a guy who can make shots and somebody who can facilitate at a high level. And I think I'm a really good off-ball defender. Um, I think my IQ is very high and I know where to be at the right time. Uh, I think I can improve a lot as an on-ball defender. And that's a challenge I look forward to taking on um, in the NBA, in practice, and, uh, and things like that. Uh, but I think right away you get those three things. And then off the court, um, like I talked about earlier, just a personable person who uh, impacts winning. So uh, I'm ready, you know, wherever that is. Thank you, sir. Rob Schaefer, when you're ready. Hey, Tyrese, thanks for doing this, man. Um, you, you've mentioned uh, some of the strengths of your game, um, and you've mentioned that you've been doing a lot of work over the last couple months um, in advance of, of the draft. I'm wondering kind of what are those areas that you're looking to improve and continue to work on um, as you make the jump to the NBA level? Uh, I would say finishing uh, with both hands and then just kind of scoring uh, off the bounce. Uh, that's been important for me, uh, especially in the pick and roll. I think basketball's transitioning to a, a 80% offensively is with a, with a pick and roll. So um, I'm prepared for that. And, you know, watching a lot of drop coverage and the playoffs and then in just uh, the regular season, that that really intrigues me because I never saw drop coverage uh, much in college. Uh, there's a lot of hard hedging and things like that. So, uh, you know, I think being able to kind of hit that in-between game, and uh, uh, I think that will be big for me at the next level. Thank you. And uh, quick, quick follow-up. Uh, you mentioned the three teams aspect. I just want to confirm that the Bulls then are not a team that you have um, spoken to at all yet? No, not yet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Fred Katz. Hey, Tyrese, how you doing, man? I'm good. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. Uh, I was just curious. You're you're pretty comfortable, it seems, at least from watching you. You're pretty comfortable playing both both on the ball and off the ball. When when you're a kid, when you're nine years old, ten years old, eleven years old, how how are you at that stage? Like when you're in your very very developing stages of basketball, where is your comfort level with those two things? Uh, well, when I was a kid, uh, in Oshkosh, we don't have a third grade team. So when you're a third grader, you play the fourth graders. If they pick like two or three third graders, play the fourth grader. So I played the four as a third grader. Okay, so we transitioned to fourth grade, and they moved me to the five because I was a taller kid. I was the tallest kid on the team, but I hated it. I hated being a big man. That's that's awful. And so I grabbed a rebound one day in practice, and I brought it up, and I was just fine, comfortable doing it. And I told Coach, like, I can play the point. Like, let me play the point. So he let me play the point guard in fifth grade, a kid who was just playing center. Uh, and I, I guess he saw, he knew what he was doing because <laughs> from there, that kind of just became my permanent position. I played all point guard from fifth grade to uh, senior in high school, and then Freshman year, I was asked to uh, come off the ball. Uh, so as a kid, um, you know, I think I became really comfortable with it after fifth grade. Uh, but I think that was just kind of kudos to, to the amount of basketball I watched. And, uh, you know, like I talked about Magic Johnson earlier, but I also, you know, LeBron's been my favorite player all growing up. So, uh, you know, obviously a guy who passes the ball at a very high level and uh, runs his team at a high level. So uh, for me, that I felt like it was a pretty seamless transition. Uh, next is, and, and a part of my pronunciation, Alan Guillaume, when you're ready. Hello, Tyrus. Uh, the, hello. The, hello. The question is about, uh, you You talk about the change between the freshman and sophomore season. Freshman season, more or more, a lot of catch and shoot, something you are really, really good uh, catch and shoot. The second, you had like the ball all the time. Uh, for your sake, creating a lot of the pick and roll, but meant less catch and shoot and more short of the dribble. How was that um, transition of the, the selection of the type of shots you, you took? You said, how was the transition of it? Yeah, the 20, how was the trend of less catch and shoot and we work more on the shot of the dribble? Yeah, uh, I say there was times in my sophomore year where I missed <laughs> that role, uh, you know, being able to just catch and shoot because... I, I would say my sophomore year, when I did get catch and shoot opportunities, it was going in. Uh, yeah. So uh, for me, that transition uh, was definitely different, but it was back to getting to what I've done basically my whole life at, at going back to, you know, being the point guard spot. Um, you know, earlier I answered the question about, you know, kind of Crete and playing in Greece and playing in USA. And to get back to that role, 
uh, for Coach Weber to trust me to play that role uh, with all the guys that were on that team was big uh, because that gave me that instilled a lot of confidence in me. And then I had those young guys that had confidence in me to play the point as well. So uh, those are top guys. The, those are guys that next year are going to be Major top degree, ten picks. Yeah, yeah the, the, those guys for them to have confidence in me, then uh, I see no reason why I shouldn't have confidence in myself. So USA was huge for me. And then when I got back. And I went to Nike camp, and I excelled there. I, I felt like going into my sophomore year, I was going to be just fine playing that position. Hey, thank you very much. Good luck from France. Yeah, thank you. Tom Chick, when you're ready. Hey, Tyrese. Um, you actually just answered part of this, and I apologize. I missed your full answer earlier. But talking about the U19 team uh, in Greece, like how much did that really do for your confidence first and foremost And being able to utilize the skill set that we saw in parts this year and, and really put you on the map in terms of this draft, like in, in terms of just confidence. Yeah, I would say it was everything for me. Um, you know, when I got there, uh, you know, I knew Coach Weber had a lot to do with me getting out there in the first place. Uh, I had a good freshman season, but I, I didn't I, I knew I, when I got the invite, I thought it was awesome. Um, you know, and I had no other plans but to make the team. But to kind of hear that was different. Like, I knew I was going to make the team, but I was still so nervous when we had to go in and, and get the answer if we, if we made the team or not. Uh, it was just a weird, a weird feeling for me. But, you know, once I made the team and, and kind of settled into my spot and, you know, my relationships grew with everybody on the team and everybody on the staff, um, you know, that, that I was good to go. Um, you know, and then I felt like, Uh, you know, being out of the country for the first time in my life, like it was a, an opportunity that I couldn't take for granted and uh, something that I had to, you know, take advantage of. And then I had family and friends back home watching all the games and they're super early here. Uh, so, you know, that, that was big for me uh, just, you know, to, to make everybody proud that's been paying attention and, and following my journey up to this point. So uh, that, that did everything for me. And, uh, and I think that that has really made me into the player I am today. That was a, a huge thing for me. Thanks, man. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Next question's for from Leo Sun, when you're ready. Hey, what's up, Tyrese? Um, I have a question about your driving ability to the rim. Uh, last year, you shot 67, or the 67 possessions ended where you took a shot at the rim or as a runner, and you made about 60.5% of them as a 67th percentile. So how do you think that's going to translate to the NBA, and do you look to attack the rim more versus uh, staying to your strengths and as a spot-up shooter and making plays? Uh, you know, I think just taking what the, uh, what the defense gives, Uh, I think a lot of my sophomore year uh, to start the year, I was getting to the rim more, but, you know, I really hurt my wrist in December. So uh, all the conference play was really hard uh, going to my left hand and finishing with my left. Uh, Cause if it got hit or I fell on it, it would be numb for the rest of the game. So uh, for me, it, it was, you know, I think I'm not trying to make an excuse by any means or say anything like that. because I don't believe in that, but um You know, I think that that had a big deal uh, to do with, you know, the majority of my sophomore year. But uh, going into the league next year, just taking what the defense gives me, I, I have faith in myself to finish with both hands. And uh, I've worked on – that's a big thing that I've been working on is just finishing over the top of people. So, um, you know, I, I'm prepared to do whatever uh, whatever I got to do. Thank next you. Up, sorry, next up is Ferdinand Rivera when you're ready. Hey, Tyrese. How you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm great. Um, from Puerto Rico. Um, what do you think of a possible opportunity to play with Stephen Curry and have him as a mentor? Uh, you know, I think that would be huge. Uh, Steph being one of the best point guards that ever played the game of basketball and uh, probably the best shooter that ever played the game of basketball, I think. Uh, it would be big for me to learn from him and uh, just kind of pick his brain and then, uh, you know, take that challenge on and practice as well because – Uh, you know, if I can stay in front of Steph and uh, try and guard him, then I feel like I can probably guard anybody. So, um, you know, that, that would be that would be big for me and uh, uh, something that would probably be really awesome. Lastly, um, you were a teammate of also Puerto Rican, George Condit. What do you think of his game and do you think he can reach the NBA level in the future? Yeah, that's my guy. Um, you know, I, I love George's game. I love his motor. Uh, he plays hard. Uh, you know, I think he definitely has a chance to get to the NBA. Uh, you know, I just think winning affects those things. So, 
Uh, you know, and at Iowa State, I think, uh, you know, we got to have a better year this year than we did last year uh, to really increase those chances for them. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. We've got about five minutes left, so we'll try to get through as many as we can. Uh, Sam Smith, when you're ready. Thanks. Um, you've been um, regarded along with uh, LaMelo Ball and Killian Hayes, the top uh, potential uh, point guard the prospects in this draft. Could, could you compare uh, and or contrast your games with theirs? We, we spoke with them a couple of days ago. Um, you know, uh, you know, I think, you know, watching those guys a little bit, uh, obviously being outside of America, I uh, haven't watched them too much, but obviously LaMelo has been a guy that's been highly followed for uh, most of his life. And uh, somebody has been doing this at a high level uh, for, for most of his life. So uh, kudos to him on what he's been doing and, uh, you know, I love his game. I think he can do a lot of things well. And then Killian at the same time, uh, watching a little bit of him and, and his growth uh, throughout this season was, was cool to see, too. Uh, I think they're both uh, really good players and uh, can be really good at the next level. Um, you know, I, I think that I, I do some things better than they do, and I think they do some things better than I do. So, um, you know, I think that we all have a little bit of different games. I think, you know, LaMelo is uh, – you know, he's, he's scoring that he's scoring the ball uh, at three levels. Um, you know, I think I'm the the, you know, the best facilitator out of the group, and I think Killian defends at a high level. So, um, you know, I think you get you know something out of out of, out of all of us, and uh, you know, I think we're three dudes that are going to be successful at the next level. Richard Harris, when you're ready. Hi, Tyrese. Um, my question is: I know your role has changed, and I also know you uh, at have been trying to uh, change your release point on your shot. Analytically, you stand out, uh, you know, over the past two seasons, you've really stood out um, uh, among this draft class. Uh, However, the one area where you're shooting off the bounce. So specifically, could you, could you describe a little more how you're trying to improve in that one area where you seem to uh, not be elite? Yeah, I would just say reps. Reps, reps, reps. Uh, just putting in as much work as I can in that. Uh, you know, I think you point out a good thing to where I didn't shoot the ball very well off the bounce. Uh, I think part of it had to do where I wasn't the most aggressive uh, coming off the bounce in a lot of games. I was looking to pass. So, uh, you know, once that pass taken away, then I'd shoot in it. And it just was a, uh, you know, a confidence thing or something that, you know, I'm not look, really looking to score anyway. So uh, when I do shoot it, it wasn't going in. So uh, it's something I've paid a lot of attention to on film and, uh, talk to Coach Prom about and talk to his staff about him and and everybody. Just uh, being more aggressive off the pick and roll, looking to score first, and then making things happen for my teammates. Um, you know, I think if I could go back and redo a lot of things, I'm gonna, I'll definitely be a lot more aggressive, especially early, uh, to kind of get myself going and then get everybody else going. I think that changes the the flow of a lot of games and the direction of a lot of games. So, uh, you know, I think that's something I, I definitely put a lot of work into and just getting up as many reps as possible every day. Uh, because I think in college, I was just, when I was getting workouts and there was a lot of catch and shoot and a lot of different things. But now being able to see myself in these actions and being able to see myself where I struggled and go directly at those points, um, you know, I think has been big for me. Would it be fair to say that, uh, again, you know, I, I was watching film of you last night. Is, is, would it be fair to say, I mean, you would have noticed this yourself, that uh, from your freshman season and even, uh, you know, during your sophomore season, uh, at different times, your release point is is varying. I mean, sometimes you shoot it perfectly, sometimes it's a little low. It, it is When you say you're doing the reps, are you trying to get that release point more consistently higher? Yeah. Yeah. I would say that, um, you know, I, I think it also adjusts where, where my defender is as well. Um, you know, I think at times when it is lower, uh, I have time to get it off. You know what I'm saying? Whereas right. if somebody's closing out heavy uh, and it hits my hands right here, it's got to go up if, if I'm trying to shoot it. So uh, I think that adjusted. And then, you know, obviously in the mid range, I jump higher because I got a big man showing, so I got to get it up. So I think it just depends on where I am, uh, you know, on the floor. That's why it's somewhat inconsistent to a point. Um, but I, I know where I want it and I know the spot where I, I have to have it at, at most points. So, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, fine tuning those things. Okay. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm going to do a couple more, uh, Winters Machado when you're ready. When it's yes, are you there? Okay. We'll move on. Uh, Ryland Stiles when you're ready. 
Hey, Teresa, you've mentioned a few times that you're just a basketball player and you, you've mentioned how the NBA is evolving and going positionless. I was going to, I was going to ask you is Shea Gittes Alexander or someone who you look at and view in that same ilk that he is someone who can play the point guard and shooting guard. Do you monitor your game somewhat after Shea and being able to play both guard positions? Uh, I mean, he's a guy watching a guy I see do things at a high level, but I wouldn't say I model my game after him. Uh, I see the comparison just because we're both tall guards. I think that's the only thing that we kind of do very, really similar. Uh, and we kind of can play either spot, but uh, I wouldn't say my, I, I model my game after him, but I think he is a great player and somebody who's uh, definitely evolving, uh, you know, and into becoming a, an all-star here soon. So uh, I love Shea's game for sure. Next up, uh, Cleaver De Silva, when you're ready. Hi. Uh, hi, Thais. Uh, I'm from Brazil. And uh, what, uh, which franchise has uh, the best fit uh, uh, with your uh, style of play? Uh, I think there's a lot of franchises that, uh, you know, could use somebody like me and uh, I fit well there. Um, you know, I see myself fitting in a lot of different spots, um, you know, wherever that is. So, um, you know, like I said, just using my game and uh, whatever the team need is, that's what I'll do. Uh, we're going to have two more and then uh, we're going to be finished. So, uh, Seb, Dimitri, when you're ready. Hey, Tyrese, thanks for taking the time. Uh, I just want to talk about your basketball like you real quick. You obviously mentioned your dad. You uh, have a cousin that was uh, in the NBA. And um, developing that basketball like you, how early did that start? When did you start picking apart film? And what do you do nowadays to kind of always stay on top? And like you were saying, um, seeing different ways the defense is scheme and, and how you can attack those different things depending on what your role is on the floor. Um, you know, I think when I started dissecting film would probably be uh late middle school uh my mom used to like film my games just for like us to watch and post highlights of on, on like instagram or something uh but i think i was watching it in different senses because i would watch it all the time and kind of see you know as a kid i'm not i'm not really paying attention to like certain things but i see things that i can get better at you know what i'm saying so yeah. i'm trying to think like oh i missed this shot in this spot so i need to work on that shot and that's why the bait like the basic principle of film uh When I got to high school, uh, later, like my junior and senior year, we only lost two games between my junior and senior year. So uh, watching a lot of film there uh, because my coach also being my teacher, uh, we could talk a lot in class about, about plays and things like that. We still talk to this day. Uh, uh, just seeing what he sees, me telling him what I see, we had a really transparent relationship, so that helped. And then when I got to college, I was dissecting right away just because I had already, uh, you know, went from there. And, and I think that's been huge for me, and I think it's something that, It's kind of evolving. I think more and more younger kids are getting into film because of, you know, great things like huddle and, and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I, I think it's it's big for kids and, and to, to watch film and uh, kind of dissect where they can get better at and where, you know, what they see. Because, you know, you always see arguments between players and coaches. 85% of the, the time, it's just a misunderstanding. Uh, I think it's just things that players can fix. Um You know, and, and and then once they fix those things and, and the coach understands what they see and there's a more transparent relationship, it fixes everything. Appreciate it, Tyrese. Good luck in the draft. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. And we got final question here. Rich, too, when you're ready. Hey, Tyrese, thanks for doing this. Uh, when you talked to the Warriors, did you happen to have uh, spoken with Sean Livingston? And um, did they mention any role being like Sean Livingston's? Um... Sean wasn't a part of the staff yet uh, when I interviewed with them. It was it was a while ago, um, but uh, you know they did they they definitely talked about where they see my role kind of uh, similar to his. Um, you know I think uh, Sean being an older dude and he could guard. Uh, you know I really think one through four at a really high level, um, and I think that's something that I hope to be able to do. Um, you know I, it's something that I'm you know working on for sure. Uh, but I think we do, you know, obviously two different things. I think Sean Livingston might be one of the best mid-range jump shooters I've ever seen. Uh, so, and I think I, I can shoot from outside better than him. So uh, I think there's obviously Sean Livingston being a great player. Uh, that That's really uh, high praise that they think I could uh, be somewhat similar to that. And 
Uh, like I said, whatever role that they ask for me, when I get there, uh, I'm gonna do it to the highest of my ability. Thank you, Tyrese, for your time today. It's very generous with this time. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us, and have a good rest of the day. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Tyrese. Thanks, Tyrese. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Tyrese. Appreciate it. Thank you. We're good to go, Tyrese. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank you, Fab. No problem.